The Read to Lead Podcast, Episode 2. See, most people, Jeff, overestimate what they can do in the next year or five years, but they totally underestimate what they can do in the next 15 minutes. Welcome to the Read to Lead Podcast with Jeff Brown. Jeff believes that if you desire to achieve true success in business and in life, then consistent and intentional reading is a must. The Read to Lead Podcast will not only help you narrow this ever-important reading list, but also bring you key insights and valuable feedback from some of today's most successful and inspiring authors. And now, Here's Jeff. I'm so glad you're back. You didn't just leave after one episode. Uh, and, and it's awesome. We actually made it to two episodes. We didn't just do one episode and disappear like so many other podcasts. No, we're here to stay. It is the Read to Lead podcast, and I am your host, Jeff Brown. Our guest today is Robert D. Smith, and we'll learn from him in just a few minutes, among other things, how to accomplish more in a day than some people do all year long. It sounds impossible, but it isn't. First, though, this episode brought to you again by Brown Nose Media. That's Brown, K-N-O-W-S Media at brownnosemedia.com. And they specialize in websites and mobile apps specifically for small business owners or for artists, authors, and speakers. They also do uh, presentations for professional speakers as well. You can find out more about them again, brownnosemedia.com. That's brown, K-N-O-W-S Media.com. Uh, Robert, first of all, uh, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you. You are officially the second ever guest on the Read to Lead podcast, preceded only by Dan Miller. And he is awesome, beyond (laughs) amazing, so smooth, so slick. I love him. You, you've heard of the campaign, I am second. Well, you are second uh, with this podcast. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it's not a bad place to be. Absolutely. Well, for those that don't know, uh, you've been uh, representing, managing the career of author um, Andy Andrews for over 30 years now. Three, as a matter of fact, Jeff, this is our 33rd year. We are as a, we are officially as old as Jesus now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've, you've also uh, consulted with numerous best-selling authors, speakers, entertainers. What I'm getting at is, in all this time, at least until now, you've you'd never written a book. So share with the uh, Read to Lead Nation, if you will, this epiphany you had one day that led to the writing of 20,000 Days and Counting. Well, you know, if there was ever a baby step being taken, the process of this coming about, this book, uh, was involved in little bitty baby steps. Because when I got my iPhone, one of the guys in my office helped me download these, well, you've heard of the apps, tons of apps out there from 99 cents to a few dollars to most of what I have is free. So one of them that I downloaded was the countdown calendar. And it simply tells you, Jeff, how many days till Christmas or New Year's or maybe your next birthday. But I simply wanted to know, does it work backwards? So I put in my birth date, which is 5555, and up popped the number of days as of that day that I had been alive, which is around 19,970 some odd days. And I was so blown away because I'd never seen my life in days before. As a matter of fact, anybody can go to therobertd.com and there is that calculator right there on the home page. They no other information but your birthday is required, and up will pop your days, how many you've been alive as of today. So at that moment, Jeff, I simply decided to do something on the next big number, which is around uh, 20,000 days, which was in another month. And a, a month later, I went away to one of these nice little boutique hotels and did like a crash course in planning my next 20,000. But in the process, I kind of looked back and celebrated on the first 20,000. And I ended up writing a, a uh, an email to Andy and Polly Andrews, simply one filled with gratitude. That up to that point, I had been managing him, I had loved it. Uh, I was very aware of the days being numbered and started looking in scripture, some ideas behind that. That, that no man knows how many days we're going to be alive, that time is like a vapor, it can go so quickly. And I wrote all of this out and sent that email to Andy and Polly. As soon as I did that, Jeff, I felt gratitude for somebody else. Mm. And I sent them the same email, but different. 
it, the beginning and the ending was a little bit different, but the same body. I ended up doing that one at a time to 48 close friends over a period of 18 hours. All of them responded. All of them were moved. And what you have is in chapter two of the book, 20,000 Days and Counting, is that email that I sent out. But then, as you know, it was expanded into this book. <laughs> well, you know, when you first look at the title, uh, if you're someone who says a baby boomer or over 50, uh, obviously you were when you wrote it. Uh, but when you first look at it, you might go, well, gosh, it's too late for me. I, I need to be a young person. Uh, why is it not too late for, say, someone over 50 to, to jump in or, uh, into this book and, and, and evaluate what you've written? Well, now let me ask you this. Do you, do you, what you know of me, do you think I'm near done? <laughs> I don't think so for no, a minute. <laughs> not at all. I mean, I'm just getting started. We're just now putting the team together to really kick things into gear. <laughs> so, uh, and, and Colonel Sanders, everybody knows that story. Mm -hmm. After he retired, he started KFC. So, I mean, there's still so much value. And right now, I mean, o o over 50? Are you kidding me? That's got to be the new 30. You know what I'm saying? So, no, I would dare say if th this book is for you if you're still alive <laughs> if you're still breathing um and as you know we've got reviews on amazon like crazy from high schoolers through through retired people well as someone who is uh, three years away from 50 myself i say amen to that uh i did the calculation on my birthday i'm at seventeen thousand three hundred and thirty one. so uh, i think and it, i'm twenty one thousand two hundred and thirty four today Oh, well, congratulations. Yeah, same to you. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to 18,000 and doing something uh, pretty exciting uh, good, when that day comes. Good. Well, I love, too, that it's a short book. It's like 103 pages. You can read it in an afternoon. And uh, I think a lot of times these days, a lot of authors, maybe it's pressure from publishers, feel the need to sort of elaborate and say the same thing over and over again several different ways. And, and books can get a little redundant these days. I like how, you know, with your book, there's no fluff. You get right down to work. Uh, was it tempting to pad it? Or was there pressure from your publishers to fill it out more or do you just want to get right down to the brass tacks and say hey time is short let's get this going Jeff, you know, I've been in the publishing industry for a couple of decades. So I've watched behind the scenes Andy write a story. And then um you know, but on a contract that's done with Thomas Nelson, his publisher, they literally do put in 50, 65,000, 75,000 words on what they're buying. And uh, I used to think, uh, you know, well, Andy's got to write 50,000 words or whatever <laughs> they've contracted to tell this story. And then he looked at me one day. He says, buddy, when I'm done telling the story, I will be done telling the story. Now, if that's 35,000 or 75,000, whatever it takes to tell the story. So we still do that with Thomas Nelson. So I want to say when this was done, when you send an email to one of your friends, when you send a love letter to your wife, when you're done, you're done. So I think um, initially they saw um, that the whole gist of the book is sense of urgency. Mm. So there was no way they were going to encourage me to, <laughs> to, to send, you know, to fluff it up. Uh, when you're done, you're done. Now, since then, you know, we've got more websites that's being done and there's a blog being posted every week. So a lot more content is going out simply because people are requesting it. I was talking to uh, to Dan Miller earlier in the week, and he talked about the importance of time and how we spend it, as obviously you do, and mentioned a neighbor with a small house that every time he goes by, uh, the big screen TV is on. That's pretty much seems to be all they're doing with their free time. My wife and I, a year or so ago, we cut out uh, our uh, our satellite TV subscription. We still watch some Netflix and Hulu, but we're a lot more intentional about it. And so we don't feel like we're getting sucked into that abyss uh, that we yes. used to be sucked into. So what would you say to someone who's beginning to reevaluate their consumption habits and maybe is tired of sort of, as you say in the book, sleepwalking through their day-to-day -day existence? Jeff, I would say this, that people have to wake up to the sense of urgency in their life, meaning... You do not know if this is going to be your last day. Is that what you want to do is spend it watching television? Is that what you, you know, so most of what people are doing today, they would maybe want to do on their last day, which tells me they need to reevaluate what they are doing. 
So uh, I applaud you and your wife for doing that, for taking that out of your home. And I think you can become much more productive with each other. Where I live right now, the first five years I lived in this house, there was no satellite, no TV, no nothing. (laughs) So uh, that gives me lots of time to devote to what's important now and what's next. Mm. Now, I do have TV now, but rarely to never do I sit down to watch it. I've got it where I can listen to it while I do uh, through a variety of rooms, actually through the entire house. The sound is on, so I'm not sitting there watching. And it's close by my desk, so I can turn the screen at any time if I need to look at something. And now with DVRs, you can go through and just record what you feel might be beneficial. Mm. Well, as a society, of course, we celebrate a lot of the the annual uh, uh, traditions and occasions like birthdays and, and anniversaries. Uh, but in the book, you put an emphasis on, you know, it's about the day. It's about celebrating today. It's about making today important. Why do you think celebrations and celebrations often are so important? Um, Jeff, I don't even know. Do you have children? I, I do not. I have a couple of dogs that I treat like kids, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's the same thing what I was leading up to. But, but you know when you've got nieces or nephews mm-hmm. or yep. something where you've seen a, 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 a newborn uh, come into the world, and then within months they take their first step, and the parents go crazy. Mm. You've seen the YouTube videos. They text you. They tell everybody about this first step that little Johnny or Sally took. They celebrate. The kid falls over, but they still celebrate. And so the idea is, at what age are we supposed to stop celebrating the baby steps? Hmm. Every day along the way, I want to applaud myself and others. There was another time when I realized after seeing Andy multiple times in a row uh, at live events that I noticed he gets a standing ovation every time I saw him during that run. Now, it doesn't mean every time he gets one, but it's on the high end that he does. Mm. And I walk backstage and I ask him, how does it feel to get a standing ovation like that every time you speak? And he kind of looked at me, he thought, oh, did I get one? It's like he (laughs) didn't quite even recognize it. But he said, I suppose I'm so concentrated on the people and their hearts and wanting to give it back to them differently that I forget to notice. Uh, But I am very aware that they did. And I walked away from that meeting thinking, Jeff, that most people will live their entire lives and never receive a standing ovation for anything they do. And I thought right then that I want to start applauding not only myself, but my friends for little things they do along the way and give them that standing ovation. You know, something that, that uh, I got out of the book uh, when I read it was, you know, just things like, you know, being at, say, I don't know, Kroger or the, you know, the, the department store, Walmart, whatever it is. And just when I'm interacting with that person, you know, behind the counter, uh, looking them in the eye, asking them how they're doing. I think you talk a little bit about that kind of thing in the book. And yes. I, I feel I feel um, uh, convicted. A connection. Well, I feel convicted when I don't do that. And I feel uh, a connection when I do. Yes. Absolutely. And your waiter or waitress at any restaurant, man, I I always open up by telling them, uh, you know, we waited extra long time to sit because I simply wanted the best waiter or waitress that they had in the restaurant. They always look and smile. And I said, I can tell right now that I'm already glad we waited, (laughs) whether we did or not. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) They love it. They love it. They love it. They're already (laughs) pumped about serving us then. (laughs) Well, some of my uh, leadership mentors, uh, people like uh, Michael Hyatt and and Dan Miller, uh, for example, have written blog posts and they've done podcasts on on, uh, perfecting your morning routine. In fact, uh, after you and I scheduled this interview, I stumbled across uh, a podcast uh, called Beyond the To-Do List by Eric Fisher. I know he had you on recently and one of the questions he, he asks each of of his guests is, you know, what is your morning routine? I'd like to ask you, though, uh, why you think the way we start the day is so critical. Why is that so important? Let me ask you this. A rocket taking off at NASA 
is it real critical the way it comes out of the chute? I mean, if it's even off one or two degrees, it's going to mess or fall over or crash or explode. So I would dare say, and look at when they, in the Olympics, all those racers, when they're in uh, that, you know, at the starting position, the way they're placing their feet, their hands, their fingers, how in tune they are for that second, uh, the little gun goes off to say go. So that start is critical. And I want to back it up just a hair, Jeff, and say that actually I start my morning the night before. Mm. Because so many people, you've heard it said, somebody will say, uh, wow, what happened to so-and-so? They seem to have gotten up on the wrong side of the bed. <laughs> my hallucination is they didn't get up on the wrong side. They went to bed on the wrong <laughs> side of the bed. They started the night before. Mm wrong yeah. so i like to read positive things i love scripture i love positive thinking books i like to watch something positive listen to some positive music and that seems to settle in on your brain and your spirit all night long now if you if that was my last day and i want it to be my best and i wake i open my eyes i'm thinking Holy mackerel, I was wrong. It wasn't my last day yesterday. I get another day, another chance, another opportunity. So the excitement starts immediately. Mm. How awesome. about that? I love it. I love it. Uh, it's so important. And, and I've just begun doing that, and I've already seen evidence of, of that making a huge, huge difference. So uh, I bet your wife is going crazy just watching you. <laughs> she is, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Who is this man? <laughs> oh, and what have you done with my husband? Yeah. <laughs> uh, something I've struggled with for a long time is rejection, going back to you know my early dating days, to uh, you know <laughs> scheduling interviews for this podcast. I'm worried that the next person I'm, I'm going to ask to be a guest is going to say no. So you, yes. you promise to help people conquer rejection forever. What does that look like? Jeff, I'm going to give a perfect example, and we're using you as the subject. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I want you, within the next, you decide how long, week, 10 days, two weeks, three weeks, whatever, I want you to give me a list of 30 individuals that do not want to be on your podcast. <laughs> that should be easy. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Find yeah. <laughs> me 30 no's. And I, now let me tell you this. I would challenge you. I do not believe you could find 30 in a row that say no. That there's going to ah. be some knucklehead. Look, I'm the perfect example. I said yes. <laughs> Somebody's going to say yes. Yeah. So uh, I did that when I started selling books that uh, with the Southwestern Company. Um, many years ago, knocking on doors, they said, "If Robert, if you will just show these books and tell the plan to like 30 people a day, you will be successful. So I knew that most people would say no. I knew that that was a challenge of selling. So in my mind, I started looking for 30 people a day that did not want my books. Jeff, I ended up being in the top 10% of salesmen. <laughs> Forget first year, out of all the salespeople of that company, I was in the top 10% my first year out. Wow. Simply because, I want you to know this, I never did succeed all summer long in finding 30 people in one day that didn't want my books. There's always somebody that said yes. <laughs> and then I applied that when I was working with Andy and booking him in the college market as a comedian. I simply started, now this is before the internet, so I simply would call these different schools and say, Mr. Director of Student Activities, you wouldn't be interested in hiring a comedian for your students, would you? He would say, no, we would not. <laughs> I said, thank you so much. And on a little legal size page, I had one through 30, and I'd write down that name and say, no. And I was excited. Then I'd call <laughs> another one. Mrs. Director of Student Activities, you wouldn't be interested in uh, hiring a comedian. I'd do that three or four times. No, 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 with excitement. <laughs> then I would ask that question and somebody would say, Robert, we just had a meeting last week with some students and we are interested in, in a comedian. Would Andy be available? And they'd ask me and I'd say, but are you sure you would want to consider Andy? Because remember, I'm still looking for my no. <laughs> but they would end up booking him. I did that enough that Andy Andrews became the number one uh, booked comedian in the nation uh, a couple of decades ago where over 1,200 schools voted him comedian of the year, not once, but twice. Wow. 
And that's where I get the idea of eating nose for breakfast. <laughs> Tell me it can't be done, and I get excited. Can I put some sugar on that? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, all of us think at one time or another, uh, sometimes not until later in life, unfortunately, about what kind of legacy we're going to leave. Is you know, anyone going to notice when we're gone? What are some steps we can take to ensure we leave behind an enduring legacy that will last you know, 100, 200 years from now? First of all, you got to decide what what would you want to say uh, and what would you want to leave? Most of it has something to do with a written or spoken word. And is what I would do is simply pretend that right now before you go to bed tonight, so on the next major meal, try to write out or pretend like this is your last time on earth. What would you tell your family? What would you tell your kids? What would you tell your neighbors? If they were sitting in front of you at the dinner table, write that out, record that somehow and see what you end up with. You will be moved and I believe the people around you will also. Andy has perfected that. And as a matter of fact, uh, when he speaks, he's pretending this is the last time it's being recorded. And that's why every time he gets on stage, it's so intense Mm. and so moving for the people watching. The book of 20,000 Days was written as if it was the last thing I would ever write. Mm. And that as soon as it got done, I would be dead. Is that what I would want to say? Is that what I would want my friends and um people to read. I want it moving. I want it to be truthful. So I think if you add the intensity that it's your last time on whatever it is you're doing, that it's not just about the story, but it is about some truth or principles that do affect people that they can use today and they will be timeless. Is it really possible, as you suggest in your book, because uh, I want you to sort of lay this out for us, if you will, to accomplish more in one day than most people do in a year? Because that sounds like a really big deal. Well, here's here's what I'm referring to that. Let's say, and, and you know, and I bet if I even ask you, uh, Jeff, do you see yourself writing a book one day? I, I do, actually, yeah. You do. I could feel it. And yet, <laughs> how many years have you been thinking about that and how much have you already got written? Uh, I have zero written. I've been thinking about it for a few years. <laughs> okay. Do you realize that today, again, I'm going to use you as the subject because most people relate to this. Before you go to bed tonight, I want you to simply take 15 minutes and I want you to write out 10 possible titles. I want you to give me the chapter names for at least 10 different chapters. I want you to write out in 15 minutes a synopsis that's anywhere from three to five or 25 sentences. Mm. No more than one page on a typewriter or on a computer, a Word doc would this take. Type this stuff out and you will have done more today than you've done combined in your life towards your book. Now I'm saying just to do that in 15 minutes. And if you master these 15 minute chunks of time, you will have your book done before Christmas. Well, I really love how you break it down like that, because when you do that, it, it really makes it seem plausible. I mean, it, yes. I, I, I can accomplish that. I can take 15-minute increments and do that. So that is very powerful. Um, See, most people, Jeff, overestimate what they can do in the next year or five years, yeah. but they totally underestimate what they can do in the next 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And, and by the way, I never set out to write the book. As you know, it was an email. That's right. (laughs) And I never, once that idea started being talked about, it still never occurred to me, oh my gosh, I've got to sit down and write a book. No, I just kept writing and sharing different things. And you know, the chapters are very short in that because none of them are any more than what you would send in an email. Well, I think now is as good a time as any for me to start because uh, the week before this interview, a week ago today, in fact, I was uh, let go from my uh, previous position, one I'd held for 14 years. Me and two of my colleagues were uh, were, were released. And so I'm, jump, I'm jumping into the you, podcast full force. Do you hear me celebrating? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm celebrating right along with you. Well, yeah, a colleague of mine in, in the radio business, I spent 25 years in that business up until last week, um, yeah. uh, articulated this very well. I'm going to try to do half as good as he did. But I think this is especially true for guys, maybe women as well. But he talked about how as guys, we kind of walk around thinking in the back of our minds, one day, somebody is going to figure out that we don't know what the heck we're doing. 
Absolutely. So, someday somebody's going to figure out Jeff doesn't know anything about radio, or someday somebody's going to figure out that Jeff, uh, w- what business does he have starting a podcast? He doesn't know what he's doing. So why do you think so many of us, because I think that's true for a lot of people, uh, live with this self-doubt all the time? Okay, let me tell you this. Let me give a full disclaimer. Jeff, I, Robert D. Smith, have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I, I don't consider that I know anything. I, 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 I do not put myself out there as an expert on anything. I can never tell you for sure this one thing will work <laughs> because I flat do not know. The only thing I know for sure is that I do not know. Do you mm. hear me? Yeah, I hear you. So the <laughs> idea is, now what I do is simply share with you what's worked for me. You know, you can't deny my testimony. My testimony, whether you like it or not, is my testimony. So I simply tell a story. If you don't like it, that's okay. (laughs) I wasn't that impressed with you in the first place either. (laughs) Do you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. So you're looking for the yeses. Now, even in the the long run, now you know I don't want to buy – I don't want to find 300,000 people that don't want to buy the book. I want to find the people that want to buy the book. You know what I'm saying? Right. You you have to, at some point, the whole idea of the no's is to get to the yeses. Hmm. We still have to make money. So the idea that uh, you have to be an expert or anything, you can be an expert or anything that you want to Google enough and read about. (laughs) I had a leader once tell me, and I don't know if this came from Jim Collins' book, um, uh, Good to Great. I believe it's where it came from. But a leader told me that, you know, when you've read five books on a particular topic, you now know more about that topic than probably 80 or 90 or 95 percent of the population does. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, you could spend that much time, you know, a few hours reading uh, or Googling any one topic and become an amazing Mm -hmm. expert nowadays. Well, share a bit with us, if you would, about the experience uh, maybe many years ago about first kind of realizing or coming to realize what your true passion and purpose was. When did you know and how did you know what you might be spending the rest of your life doing? Ah, Jeff, you're not going to believe this. This is just between me and you. Okay. I'm not sure if I found it yet. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Did you hear me? (laughs) Now, here's everybody waiting for that epiphany, waiting for the lightning bulk or, you know, something to happen to say, this is it. I did not set out to be Andy's manager 33 years ago. I simply agreed to help him out till he found somebody (laughs) to this day i still don't have a contract with him wow we never thought we would need it because i wasn't sticking around (laughs) i i now he knew i didn't know what i was doing in the he did know that i knew about people and that people seemed to like me and i could get along with people so i think that's kind of critical yeah but i think that if you find yourself in a position you're not sure today you're supposed to be doing what you're already agreed to do Hmm. In my mind, I had an analogy 33 years ago because there's a lot of grunt work to do with Andy and getting this thing kicked off and started when I didn't know what I was doing. I can only imagine. It's insane (laughs) when I look back and think about this. And the analogy came, it was almost like God said, Robert, would you be willing to make Andy's bed for me today? And I said, yes, God, I would make Andy's bed today. And so I would, with joy, make his bed. Now, nobody likes to make the bed, but my mom wanted me to make the bed when I was growing up. So we always made our bed. To this day, I still make my own bed. And the idea was, would you make Andy's? So the next day, uh, I I woke up and I asked God, now, what, what am I supposed to do today? He says, well, first of all, again, would you mind making Andy's bed? Well, for a day, I wouldn't. And maybe today, that's okay. So I did that also, Jeff. Mm. Then it occurred to me after several months, is God going to ask me to make his bed every day? (laughs) And then I heard God say, if I ask you to make his bed every day, will you? Well, we all want to do the will of God. You want to say yes, and you want to live a happy and fulfilled life. And the idea, if, if you say yes to those little things as they come about, and you master those little things, nothing stays the same. 
IBC, I don't really have to make Annie's bed. And that was a figurative statement. But throughout this process, the job I do has continually changed. No two days have ever been the same. And I would dare say, unless you're fixing widgets or putting them on a conveyor belt, that your job is filled with variety. And if not, then it's up to you to make it so, if at all possible. But you can, re- by the way you react will determine how different it will be. And I think when you react positively, you will find your passion. In that this is a podcast uh, that encourages and wants to encourage intentional reading to better succeed in business and in life. I'm curious to know uh, what it is you're reading or maybe have read in the last couple of years that has had the greatest impact on you or maybe that you enjoyed the most. Wow. You know, one of the books that to this day is second only to the Bible itself is Ogmandino's The Greatest Salesman in the World. I really strongly encourage people to get that book. And then um, one very similar, even to the point, one of Andy's endorsements on The Traveler's Gift was, it appears that Og Mandino has passed the torch on to Andy wow. because that book is written in the same format or fashion, meaning when you get done with it, you don't know, did this really take place? (laughs) You feel so moved by the reality of the story that it just feels so real. Mm -hmm. And Andy and Og both incorporated history historical facts that you could look up throughout their story so you weren't sure did it happen or not. So I I would definitely say those two books. um, And right now, Jeff, I read, good gosh, I would say every 48 hours, I'm going through another book. Well, one of the things that we encourage at readtoleadpodcast.com is uh, for listeners to go there, and if they click the uh, send a voicemail button on the right of the page, they can leave a question uh, for a guest. And uh, today's voicemail, uh, Robert, comes from Kyle. Hey, my name is Kyle Johnson. Uh, I blog at kylebjohnson.com and ministryservingministry.com. Robert, I just got to tell you, I love your energy. Every time I listen to you talk, and I'm just curious, first, where does it come from and how do you sustain it? That's just so incredible. And uh, thanks, Jeff, for such a great podcast. <laughs> uh, Jeff, do I feel that energetic? You do seem, I hear that energetic? Yeah, you're just very infectious. You just have <laughs> oozing with personality is what you, what you are. Wow. I think the idea, if this is my last day, I want it to be my best. You know, it is showtime every day with the friends I'm with, the people I work with. Uh, I truly look at it like this is my last day. Here's the memory I'm creating. Here's the applause I'm giving to these people. And so if I think if you do it with that intensity uh, every single day, uh, and of course, I've been wrong 100% of the po- time up to this point. Do you hear me? So I'm excited that I'm wrong that many times. Yes. But at some point, I'm going to be right. And that will be a glorious thing, at least for me. And I hope for the other people, too, just in celebrating uh, the existence and the impact that all of us can have. Because who wants to be around somebody moping around? Well, before I let you go, Robert, uh, remind everybody where we can find you online. How can others connect with you? And if you've got any projects coming up you'd like others to know about, feel free to share those as well. You're very kind. It's at therobertd.com. Tells you more than you probably want to know. There's, <laughs> um, there's videos, there's blogs, there's all kinds of stuff. And you can even sign up um, for something. I don't even know what you sign up for. Oh, I've got a battle tested branding free download ebook that you can get that tells you the behind the scenes information on what I've done for the last three decades with Andy Andrews. And truly, they're ideas that anybody can apply. And we'll have to uh, twist your arm to see if we can't get uh, maybe Andy on the show sometime soon. That would be awesome, buddy. <laughs> I know you will do well, Jeff. I'm very proud for you stepping up and moving forward with this. And I assure you it's going to be awesome well thank you so much robert i really appreciate your time i've had a blast and i know listeners will love it too thank you again very much and we hope to uh, maybe cross paths in person someday 
Great. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation with Robert D. Smith. As with every episode, you can find the show notes. Uh, in this case, readtoleadpodcast.com slash 002. That's readtoleadpodcast.com slash 002 for all the resources and links discussed in today's episode. I want to ask you, too, if you would, uh, this is your call to action for today, and that is to uh, please check out readtoleadpodcast.com slash iTunes. When you go there, you'll be redirected to our podcast in iTunes. Uh, and if you click on over to reviews, uh, I would love it if you could rate the podcast with five stars, if you feel it warrants it, and leave a review as well. And of course, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Those things collectively will help this podcast get noticed and, and help ensure that folks who want to discover podcasts uh, of this type and this kind of content will be able to do so. Again, that's Read to Lead Podcast dot com slash iTunes. If you're a business owner or a business leader, our next episode will be of particular interest to you. We'll talk with entrepreneur John Lee Dumas, host of the podcast Entrepreneur on Fire, and discuss is a podcast right for your business? Is that something you should consider for your platform? You'll have more on that next time around. We'll see you then. Thanks so much for listening to the Read to Lead podcast. As a subscriber, we challenge you to be more than just a passive listener. Become a vital member of the community. Visit us on the web at readtoleadpodcast.com and chat with other members at facebook.com slash readtoleadnation. Until next time, remember, leaders read and readers lead. Oh,